Welcome to the North Shore Community Association's podcast, January 24th, 2023. Hello, this is Annie Lafreniere, the NSCA's Programs and Communications Coordinator. Today, we will present an interview with writer, director, filmmaker Guy Rogers from Montreal, who created and directed the film What We Choose to Remember, a documentary about the English-speaking population in Quebec. We will follow with the community events on the North Shore. Good morning, Mr. Rogers, and thank you for joining our podcast this morning. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. Oh, thank you for joining us. It's, we're going to be discussing your role as a filmmaker and the film What We Choose to Remember. It's a documentary that aims to explore the identity of the people who identify as English speakers in Quebec, and it also investigates the social, socio-political history of language in Quebec. As an independent filmmaker, if you would speak a little bit about your background as a filmmaker and what inspired you to create this film on English speakers. Sure. Um, I, I was not born in Quebec. I came here to go to school. Um, I was actually born in Western Canada. I grew up in Australia, of all places, and uh, was, was accepted into the National Theatre School of Canada in Montreal. And the year was 1980. So as you know, some of your viewers will recall, that was the year of the first referendum. And the National Theatre School is a bicultural institution. So half of the students are French speaking, half of the students are English speaking. But in that particular year, because of the politics, nobody was speaking. You know, the French kids and the English kids, they, it was totally polarized. And I had little knowledge of the recent history of Quebec, in fact, the history of Quebec at all. And I was absolutely fascinated by what was going on here. Like, why are all these young people who should be having fun together, like, not talking? So, so I graduated from the National Theatre School in the playwriting program, and I've worked for uh, most of my adult life um, in film and multimedia. And during that time, I've been observing Quebec, observing, I mean, I'm married to Francophone, so I, I'm fairly deeply embedded in the French-speaking community. And I've worked on many, many productions as sort of the token Anglophone, international productions where I write in English, but everything else happens in French. So, you know, I, I have a fairly well-rounded view of Quebec. And when the money came available to make some films, to make some projects about identity and belonging, it just seemed to me that this was the right time to make this film uh, about English speakers in Quebec. It was a good fit by, for that time period, yes. Well, it was and the 50th anniversary of the, uh, of the FLQ crisis when we got the funding. And it just, you know, people who lived through the FLQ crisis are my age or older. And, you know, they're still around, they're still lucid. So it seemed like an occasion to really hear what they had to say about what was going on back then and what has changed since. And, I, and I'm happy that I did because some of those people, they're not going to be around in 25 years, certainly not going to be around in 50 years. That's true. I vividly remember the FLQ and what a pivotal point it was. And it was brought about a lot of uh, divisiveness, I, for lack of a better word. But yeah, I understand right now that you've been traveling across uh, Quebec promoting your new film. Would you elaborate why you've chosen to create and direct this particular film and what awareness that you wish to bring to the English speaking communities in Quebec? Sure. Well, you know, I wanted to make the film for three reasons. One was that um, it was the 50th anniversary of the FLQ crisis. And I thought it was important to document that period, specifically for young people and for immigrants, because it was a, a turning point in Quebec history. It, it's a lens through which we can understand a lot of current things, particularly, you know, Bill 96, Bill 21. But I also wanted to show how much Quebec has, has changed and in a positive way. Um, the English-speaking community has evolved ex to an extraordinary extent in terms of learning French, integrating, you know, becoming part of Quebec. And again, up until Bo Bill 96, you know, there's been a slight step backward in the last little while. But but as I was making the film, Bill 96 was not really on the fully on the radar yet. So I was looking at it as a celebration of 50 years of progress, which is pretty much known in the English-speaking community not so well known or appreciated in the Francophone communities. I guess one thing I didn't mention was that as well as being a, uh, a writer and a, 
and a filmmaker. I, I've also been a, a social activist, a community activist. And about 20 years ago, I founded the English Language Arts Network, of which I was the executive director for, for well, until last year, actually. Chance to work with many community organizations and regional associations. And one of the untold stories in Quebec are the regional communities. I mean, most people in Montreal, English speakers as well, have no idea about all of the English speaking communities all around Quebec, their history, their, you know, their their people, uh, their, their personalities. So that was the third piece that I wanted to put in this film, both for the benefit of the English speaking community, but also it's it's a real eye opener for the uh, for the French speaking community. You know, I've been touring it now for about eight months and the response has been consistently extremely positive. Why do you think that is? It's it's so positive. You know, there, uh, there's a number of things going on. One is that it was very difficult to figure out how to tell a story. You know, when you make a film, you can interview maybe 20, 30 people max. Uh, then you get into information overload, overload, or you spend so little time with each person that you don't get to know them. So we were aiming to have 20 to 30 people um, participate in the film. Then who do you choose? You choose people based upon their professions, their ages, their ethnicity, their religion. And it was only after thinking a long time about the project that we hit upon the idea of thinking about the English-speaking community as a story about immigration. Starting with the presumption that there was this place called Nouvelle France, there was this moment in time, the so-called conquest, when the English began to arrive. And then so we broke up history into periods of immigration, waves of immigration. And so families that have been here two or three hundred years have a very different sense of belonging to families that have been here for you know 20 years or people who've arrived more recently. And also it, it allowed us to demonstrate something which is, a, is, is not very well understood, I don't think, amongst the Francophone majority. The English-speaking community is thought of as being all descendants of that first wave of people who conquered Quebec, this notion that we're all sort of connected to the British army. Whereas when you look at it as waves of immigration, there's a second wave starting with the Second World War, which has nothing to do with the British Isles. There were people from all over the world who were pushed into the English school system because because they were not Catholics. So we have Jewish people, we have Greek Orthodox, we have Hindus, Muslims. And at the time, the Catholic schools were very reluctant to accept non-Catholics. That is this true. is a very significant historical fact that is not widely recognized. So the film allows me to talk about those people who arrived after the Second World War, were pushed into the English system, became Anglophones, were accused by Jacques Parizeau of being the Vatetnik, and then the, the children of Bill 101 who who learned French, but in the beginning were struggling to assimilate because, you know, the majority wasn't sure what to make of them. And what I found, to my surprise, was that the, the most recent immigrants have a stronger sense of belonging than the people who arrived after the Second World War. You have to go all the way back to the first wave, the people who've been here hundreds of years, or the most recent wave, to have a fairly strong sense of belonging in Quebec, which is bizarre. In your opinion, why do you think that the people immigrating now would be more having that sense of belonging? There's two things. One is that the, there's no there's no sense of an older time and place. You know, the, the, the rules have been set. French is the public language. Most of them come here because they want to work in French. They want to speak in French. So there's no sense of French being forced upon them or anything being taken away from them. And the other thing is that newcomers are treated quite differently than old timers. I mean, just a short anecdote. When I arrived at the National Theatre School, um, I spoke about two words of French. And yet... I was embraced by saying those two, two or three words in French, whereas friends that I met later who grew up in Quebec or who grew up in Canada, who spoke French actually quite well, were sort of looked upon badly because they didn't speak French perfectly. So there was this double standard of, of old time Anglos. You don't speak French well enough. You had a bad accent. You stumble over words. And they were not made to feel welcome, whereas I was made to feel welcome because I was a newcomer. You know, I, I, I was trying. And I think a lot of recent immigrants get that, you know, they're trying to speak a bit of French and they don't have deep roots in Quebec. So they get treated in a different way, which, which creates a different dynamic and relationship with the majority population. You know, one of the reasons that I wanted to film waves of immigration was that I wanted to create a representative conversation. So, you know, one person will kind of tell their story if you interview them one-on-one, -on -one. but with a room full of people, there's kind of a shared responsibility to, 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 to speak a larger truth. Also, a room full of people 
they they inspire one another. So when we were talking about difficult things like families being excluded from the Catholic school system, you know, people might have felt personally um, uncertain about the history because it involved their grandparents. You know, maybe their grandparents were just obnoxious people that, you know, the teachers didn't want them. But once we started talking about it as a real true phenomenon, then people could talk about it with passion and with confidence. So having these conversations uh, in a group setting created a certain sense of, of being part of something larger, you know, more than just their own family, more than just their own ethnic community, but part of a group of people who arrived at the same time and had a similar relationship. And so the people screening the film have had the same response. You know, maybe somebody's family didn't live in that exact part of Europe or Africa or Asia, but they lived nearby and they arrived at the same time and they can identify with it. There's um, that common thread. I mean, because the, the film, I think, fairly accurately represents the complexity and the diversity of the English speaking community. You know, I make a big point at the end to say that this myth of the white Anglo Saxon Protestants. I mean, it's amazing to me how many of the English speakers in Quebec are Catholics. <laughs> so I, I don't, nobody's done a study about that to find out if the Protestants were more likely to run away, the Catholics were more likely to stay. But, you know, there's lots of interesting things that have popped up. And so people have identified strongly with the film. I was pretty certain that English speakers and allophones would feel that way. I wasn't 100% certain about francophones, although, you know, federalist francophones like my wife, who, who, you know, are more sympathetic, I thought would accept the film well. And they have. It was the more nationalistic francophones that I was concerned about, whether they would say, oh, this is just a bunch of cherry-picked people made to make the English speakers look good, and they're hiding the real ones who are all of these white Anglo-Saxon Protestant billionaires who are still pulling all the strings. Um, and one of the first uh, francophones who wanted to see the film was, was José Legault, who's a journalist, uh, sociologist, has written for the Gazette, but works now with the uh, Journal de Montréal. And uh, she wanted to see the film. She's very strongly nationalistic and wrote a book about the invention of the English minority in Quebec. So she called me up and she grilled me like, why have you made this film? You know, what is your political agenda? What are you trying to prove here? So, you know, I, I answered all of her questions. And then when I finished, she said, you know, I love your film. She said, I love it because in all of the years I've been associating with the English speaking community, I never see the people that I know, the, the world that I know accurately represented in the Francophone media. And I don't see it accurately, accurately represented in the English media, which tends to come across as a bunch of white British people defending their historical you know, constitutional rights. She said, your film represents the diversity that I have seen. And it's not a bunch of people whining and complaining and demanding their rights. It's a bunch of people celebrating that they've worked hard and they've made a great place in Quebec and they're happy to be here. And so you know, she's been trying to help promote the film in the Francophone community and get it on, on, on the French TV stations. That was um, rewarding to have her say that. Absolutely. It's it's validating your all yeah. the hard work that you've put into it. So with, with having all this, what exactly is the impact that you wish to obtain by promoting your film to understand the diversity? Or can you expand on that exactly sure. what, you, what it is? I, I think it's very important for young people to understand their history. And we all know that the history of Quebec is the way it is presented in schools is, is debatable. So you know, I, I think it's important to have an accurate presentation of a history, but also a history that validates the role of the English speaking community and the contribution that we have made to Quebec. Uh, so for them to kind of put all of this in the context, I, I think they, they've told me it's helpful for them. Um, but I also want to show the Francophone majority that they are hating the wrong people, you know, sort of the nasty Anglo 1% that remains in the mind of conquering folks, that that isn't what the English speaking community ever really was. And it's certainly not what it is now. And uh, the Francophones have seen it, have really responded surprisingly positively and said, you know, there are things in here we didn't know about or had forgot about or, or didn't want to know about. And uh, this is making us reconsider that relationship. So in the political context we have right now, which is this sort of nationalistic return to fear about language, which resulted in Bill 96 and a lot of animosity and antagonism towards English speakers, you know, the, the, the CAC has realized that they've created a, a serious problem with this huge blue, blue sea all around Quebec and this red, orange island of Montreal. And they have to do something to, to restore peace and to restore the social fabric. So I, I'm thinking that the, the timing is right for, for a less passionate, more reasoned conversation about where we come from 
and where we need to go next, which is why the film is, is a takeoff on Je me souviens, you know, what we choose to remember. That will, that will determine the decisions we make about the future. 